Hey everyone, welcome back to another Kevin's Creations here on Geektopia Island. I'm Kevin. I'm Cardwell. And we're back today with a brand new deck tech for y'all. It's going to be a wild deck. I mean, it's one of the other fun one turn kill or two turn kills, however, whenever you want to do it. Um, it's kind of ridiculous. It's with a new set. And the new ruler, he's probably going to be my favorite ruler of the new set just because he's he's crazy awesome and it's tribal. Yeah. I love tribal anything. And just before anyone like peeps up over he said this during the set review too before we even knew there was a one or turn two kill so yeah this dude's nuts yeah and he's good. it's just gonna be sweet um but before we get into it guys we just remind you that we do have a patreon the link is down below go check it out it really just takes an extra dollar to give us some love and support and we greatly appreciate it also down below you'll find the link to our force of will grimoire app which is our deck builder slash database for force of will um it's a really good uh utility tool to use for any kind of deck building for it if you're bored out and about and you're just like, I have a deck idea, I need to put it down, go for it. It's super fun, it's super easy, and super simple. Done. With that, guys, we're going to delve into the wolf pack with our boy Wolfgang. Because, I mean, he's got wolf, his name's Wolfgang. Like, yeah, come on now. Right? All right, so Wolfgang, Exile Demon Prince. He is the Cthulhu ruler guy. He is red, blue, and black, which is already awesome. Pretty, yeah. Because your stone gets to be amazing. Um, you may only have Darkness and or Cthulhu cards in your deck, so that's one of his stipulations. You may put a Madness counter on this card rather than pay the Awakening cost of a Cthulhu spell you control. At the end of turn, if there are five or more Madness counters on this card, you lose the game. So he is kind of dangerous in that, but you can you can essentially run hot for a turn as yeah. long as you win that turn. Exactly. So that's that's the main way this dude is super busted. Is you don't have, it's at the end of turn, so you can just be like, put seven counters on it as long as I kill you. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. The first guy we have is Sh Shub Nigagorath. He's a black and a red, 4-4. Four, four. But if you fire a chant, you can... Wait, if a fire chant you control will deal damage, it deals that much, plus 400 instead. Darkness chance you control gain drain, which is awesome. But enter. Search your deck for a Cthulhu, reveal it, and put it in your hand. Then shuffle your deck. If this card was awakened, produce a red and a black. And awakening is a red, or just put a madness counter on it. And this is what, like, the start of the deck, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is one of the big cards of the deck to make it just be like, hey, I win. I win, yeah. Um, and then this is the other piece of that, which is Yaxototh. He is a red and a blue for a 0 10. Cthulhu resonates you control gain swiftness. Enter. This card gets plus 1000 until the end of turn. Yep. If this is awakened, resonate as you control, get plus 1,000 and pierce until the end of turn. And it awakens for a blue and a red. So essentially, just so those that know or have not seen it, you essentially start with Shub. You play him, you awaken him, you go get another Shub. And you do this three more times. You yep. get all four of them out. Each one you awaken, so you have four Madness. Then the last one that comes in, you go get the Yogg, and you awaken him. And he gives all your plus, dudes plus 1,000 and swiftness and pierce. And swing. And then turn one, you swing for 66, which is ridiculous. Yeah, which is super ridiculous. So you're just like, hey, you're dead. But it is dangerous because <laughs> if they have a bounce spell or a kill spell for Yogg, then you just lose the game because you're at five madness. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's dangerous to play that way, but you can't. <laughs> then we'll go to the rest of the deck. they just help you get there for sure. All right. And this guy is Umar T Tawali. It's a blue, red, and a black. It's a 8-8. Remove this card from your hand from the game, produce a red, blue, black. Spin this only to play Cthulhu cards. This helps you do it on turn one uh, uh, to be able to produce that extra blue. You may play this card from your removed area. Awakening, uh, the three red, blue, black. Enter, put target resonator from your opponent's graveyard into the field under your control, which is pretty cute just in general. I like that ability. Yeah, even if you just get to play him, like if you don't yeah. want to just go crazy on the turn one kill, Playing this to get one of their dudes is pretty strong. Yeah, or if anything gets eroded to stop the turn one kill and all that, it's really yeah. powerful. Uh, next is Suya, Curse Spawn of the Star slash Curse of Ragnarok. It is uh, one black for Suya, and he's a 4-4. Four -four. Enter, target player banishes a non-magic stone, non general entity. Put X-1-1 counters on this guy, where X is the total cost. You may pay black less to play cards named Curse. And then the chance side, which is Curse of Ragnarok, has Remnant. It's one black, or two black... Uh, look at your opponent's hand, choose a card, they remove that card from the game. But if you have a Sui in play, the rest of them cost one. Yeah. Which is nuts. This dude's really, really strong. I didn't give this dude enough credit when I first saw him, but I played against him and I'm just like, this guy's gross. Yeah, he's very gross. Because turn two, you can get two cards out of their hand really quick. Yeah. And then even turn three, you can probably just destroy everything, every hand. Yeah, and he's a creature dude that like hits something and kills it and then turns into a spell that removes cards, which is gross. Which is, yeah, super gross. That you can cast from the graveyard, yeah. yeah. The next one is Neural Tip. 
uh, he is a red black. Yes, uh, eight four with precision. Whenever this card destroys a resonator, put two one one counters on it. And the awakening is a red and black. Enter, destroy up to two target J resonators, J slash resonators. Your opponent controls. Players cannot chase to this card. So it can kill whatever it wants and gets bigger. And it can be done for free with the madness. Yeah. So this card's extremely powerful. Yeah, he's pretty stupid. Yeah, yeah. Next up is Haster, the Messenger of Madness. He has a blue and a red for a 6-7 with quick cast. Enter, cancel target spell or ability that targets Cthulhu you control. If this card was awakened, you may copy the target before canceling it instead. <laughs> yeah. You may choose new copies for the target and then pay a blue and a black, blue and a red for awakening. So if they have a kill spell, kill target resonator, you're just like, cool, I'm going to copy that instead and kill your dude. Yep. Thanks. Thanks. Enjoy. And did that feel good? Probably, probably not at all. Uh, the next one, Astroth. It's a black and a blue. One seven. It has Bane. So enter, draw two cards and discard a card. If this card was awakened, look at your opponent's hand and choose a card and then remove it from game, which is just powerful, which is uh, blue and a black as well. Yeah, in all honesty, this is one of my favorite dudes just because he's he looters for you and makes you get rid of a card in their hand. Like, yeah. Okay, cool. You have a guy that blocks everything. You get to draw a card, essentially, and then they get to discard a card. All for, could be just two mana. Yeah. Or two will. Uh, and then finally, we have Satan's Phantasma Body slash Flame of the Outer World. Uh, Satan's final body is a red and a black for a 6-6 six, six Resonator. Enter. Remove target two mana counters from your ruler. When While searching your deck, you may play this card by paying its cost. You may play either part of this alternate card when you do that. Yeah. Um, and the other one is Flame of the Outer World, which is a red and a black. Quick cast chant. This card deals 800 damage to target J Resonator. Players cannot chase this card. And if you have Shove in play, then it gains you life and it deals extra damage. Because <laughs> yeah. it's a red black spell, which is silly. Yeah. Card is nuts just because it can be played while you're searching. And it gives you reduced madness. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Pretty good. All right. The first spell that we have, of course, is Shadow Strike. It's a two black and... It's a quick cast. Destroy target resonator. The card is awakened. Your opponent banishes a resonator. And the awakening to it is banish two dark crystals, but we don't have that. Yeah. So it's literally there just to have a kill spell for if you play against this deck. Then you need something that's like a target kill spell. Yeah. You have to. Uh, next is Wolfgang's Apocalypse. It is a blue and a black for a chant. Your opponent banishes a resonator. Put the top X cards of your deck into your graveyard where X is the total cost of the resonator banished this way. If this card is awakened, you may play up to two Cthulhu's from your graveyard without paying their cost until the end of turn. If you do, at the next end of turn, the controller banishes them. Red and a black for the awakening. So, this is a Cthulhu spell that you can, or a spell you can do and just have free dudes. Yeah. Like, all about it. And if, if somehow your swiftness dude dies, you can just do this next turn, if, as long as you didn't go overboard with the madness, and then just win that turn as well. So. Yeah. So it's all good, because you're being able to bring it back all your dudes, which is cool. Next one is Necronomicon, Book of the Outer World. It's a blue, black, and red. It's an addition. You may pay a blue and a black, or a red and black less to play this card if your ruler is Wolfgang, so obviously it's just going to be a black. If you do, put a madness counter on your ruler. Non-J resonator entities your opponent controls lose all enter abilities. Cthulhu, uh, you control again, plus four, plus four. So this is good for against the the... Mirror match. There we go. I couldn't think of the word. Kinda. Kinda. It's, it's non J rulers, non J resonators. So like your other, their intro triggers still happen. Yeah. But it's still pretty good. Yeah. So not too bad. Yeah. Uh, the stones they're really simple. We're playing Magic Stone of the Scorched Bales, Magic Stone of the Dark Depths, and then Adaractus Memoria because it's a three stone land, which is totally awesome. Yeah. And then that is it for the deck. We do have like a one or two honorable mentions. Uh, the the main one we have is Battle Comes to an End, and then. It is two black and one for name a card, search your opponent's deck, graveyard, and hand for all cards that share a name with that card, and remove them from the game. And then that's that's really the main card we have for the sideboard that you could use. Yeah. You could also use Abdul if you wanted to, just because that dude's busted. He's two mana that your opponent's dudes don't come to, their inner triggers don't trigger. Yeah. Like, what, what really kills you is the plus 1,000 on the inner trigger, so... Yeah, I'll it's, stop. it's kind of nuts how good he is. Yeah. Um, but that is it for the deck, guys. It's going to be super fun. I mean, if, if I get the turn one kill or if he gets the turn one kill, you just win. But it's still a dangerous play because if they have any way to stop you, then you just lose. Yeah, exactly. So you're kind of all in, but hey, whatever. 
Overall, though, I think he's going to be one of the one of the better rulers just because he's super powerful in in himself. Because he gives you free spells, like free things are dumb. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you again next time. Goodbye. Later. Also, guys, make sure you hit that like button down below and subscribe to our channel, and then hit that bell for any future notifications that you have for our videos. And we go ahead and give a big uh, thank you to our fans for over the years, especially our mythic and above Patreon followers. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, with that, we love you. Thank you for your support.